jailed in the house, unable to leave unless a male family member is with you? How about getting whipped if you refuse to wear a veil? How about not being able to report being raped because you don't have four male witnesses? If you report it, they'll be stoned to death for having unmarried sex. How about the right to vote? Let's see, most Islamic countries are dictatorships or failed states, so you can't vote. Forced marriages, child rape, incest, it just keeps getting worse. Incest. Wow. Um... I'm not sure where you're getting your information from or if you've possibly mistaken us with somebody else. Why is incest wrong? It's, uh, it's not clear to me that it's wrong. Okay. It's clear to me. It, there's, a, there's an episode. No. In all honesty, I'm not here to make a mockery out of you. I'm not here to criticize you. I'm not even here to question your intelligence. All I'm here to do is to give you advice. As someone who sincerely wishes the best for you, and which is the best for all of humanity, as a Muslim should be. The first advice I give to you is, please, if you want to talk about Islam, know what you're talking about. Don't be talking about some random news topic that has nothing to do with Islam. If you want to judge Islam, judge it for what's in here, and on the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Speaking of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I noticed your failed attempt at trying to draw him. I know it's worked for many others and it's made them really, really famous before and I'm not sure if that's what you were trying to do, but please, give it up. I honestly want you to stop wasting your time and rather spend your time wisely in trying to find out who this man is. Find out what made this man the most influential man in the world. Find out what made this man one of the greatest lawgivers, the greatest lawgiver of all time. Find out what made this man the most perfect example to walk the earth. A mercy, not only to mankind, but every form of creation. This is a man who little children would run up to him because they knew how merciful he was. They knew that he would take them seriously despite their age. When he was visited by children, he would pat them on their head, while the fathers of others wouldn't even kiss their own children. At a time when people were burying their daughters alive, he was the one who gave honor to daughters. He was the one who gave honor to women. He was the one who promised paradise for the one who raised one daughter righteously. A man who would treat the poor the same way he would treat the rich. A man who would treat the black the same way he would treat the white. Muhammad peace be upon him was a man who his own enemies would call him the truthful and the honest. A man when his enemies would look at him in the eye, they would say this is not the face of a liar. Even to this day, some of his worst enemies had become the most noble of his supporters after realizing that he was a man of truth. Find out why we love him. Find out why some of the companions were ready to die for him. I don't say this lightly, I mean they actually threw themselves at arrows whenever the enemies would try to assassinate Muhammad, peace be upon him. I ask you to read into the story of a companion by the name of Khubayb, may God be pleased with him, when he was crucified and tortured and the one who was torturing him would say to him, O oh Khubayb, wouldn't you rather that Muhammad, peace be upon him, be in your shoes right here and you be in the comfort of your own family in your own home? He responded by saying, I would rather be here and die than to see a thorn prick the foot of Muhammad, peace be upon him. I want you to ask yourself, why are there 1.7 billion people today all across the world that are eager to implement the way he lived to the absolute core. From the way we enter the bathroom, to the way we would govern an entire country, to the way we dress, to the way we eat, to the way we even sleep on our right side. We follow him to the absolute core. So I suggest you stop wasting your time in attacking the man that you cannot phase at all. If God, the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in between, the one and only, has honored him, who are we to even try to dishonor him? If you don't understand what I'm trying to say, let me give you a quick experiment. What I want you to do is to walk outside tonight. Look at the brightness of the moon and go ahead and spit at it. And see what your spit does to the moon. The same way that your spit doesn't affect the brightness of the moon. The same way that your spit doesn't even reach the moon. The same way that your spit doesn't even phase the moon is exactly what you're doing when you even try to attempt to dishonor Muhammad, peace be upon him. And if anything, when you do try to spit at the moon, you're only harming yourself. So please, 
stop what you're doing, stop wasting your time and try to find out who he really was for your own benefit. Seek my advice. We want the best for you. Peace.